Hello, good day, everyone. Welcome back to Huawei Routing and Switching Elite Training for HCIE. Today's topic will be on IPv6. My name is Yap Chi Yuan. I'm the trainer for uh, HCIE, and uh, we are one of the authorized learning partner in Malaysia. Okay, so let's look into the forward for today's topic. Today's topic, we are going to focus on IPv6 also called IPNG, and G stands for Next Generation. So it's a second generation on the network layer protocol. Now the first generation is called IPv4, and this is the second generation, IPv6. IPv6 protocol optimize the IPv4 protocol. Now what are the optimization? We are going to discuss later on. IPv4 addresses are exhausted, so we are running out of IPv4 and evolving to IPv6 is irreversible trend. So from IPv4, we have 32-bit. Okay, we are moving into IPv6 era, which is 128-bit. So we don't look back. Okay, so we only look forward. So this is the trend. IPv6 is the trend. Now, the objective for today's topic, um, overall, we are going to understand what is the IPv6 principle then we are going to look into some of the uh, IPv6 configuration as in the routing protocol. Then I also will discuss a little bit on the SM scale. Now these are the uh, content overview. So first we look into the principle, command and the SM. Now in the principle, so we are going to look into some of the topic include, first I'm going to start with the IPv6 basic. Then we are going to look into the implementation of the IPv6, such as the nitty gritty about the bit, the addressing scheme, unicast, anycast, multicast, all those things. Then we are going to look into the IPv6 in action, such as implementing IPv6 in the routing, unicast routing. Then we also will look into the multicast IPv6 and something in between from IPv4 to IPv6. Okay, so. Uh, without further ado, let's start with our lesson. First, we are going to look into IPv6 description, which is the IPv6 basic. Now, we are going to look into the characteristic first. Okay, so what is the characteristic of IPv6? Now, let's look into the IPv6 characteristic. Now, one of the major characteristics of the IPv6 and also advantages of IPv6 is that it has huge address space and how huge so we have 2 to the power of 128 that is in IPv6 if you compare to 2 to the power of 32 that is in IPv4 you can see that there is a big jump in the number of address that you can have now second is that IPv6 have a simple packet structure now what it mean here is that when we look into the packet trace later on you're able to see that in IPv4, the header is more complex compared to IPv6. Uh, so IPv6 is actually simple, IPv4 is complex. Now, uh, IPv6 is simple, but it's not necessarily it's shorter compared to IPv4. As you can see that the IPv4 has 32 bit versus IPv6 has 128 bit. So the packet structure of the IPv6 allow it to be expand. Now third, IPv6 support auto configuration and re-addressing. So we can have multiple address and we also can configure the uh, address in an auto configuration way. All right. So we do not need necessary to use a DHCP even though we still can. So we can just configure the router and the host can just get the IP address from the router. We call this as a stateless addressing. Now I'm going to go more in depth on the auto configuration later on. Now next is that the IPv6 do allow us to have hierarchical network addressing. Uh, in this case, the structure here referring to the summarization. Now one of the key words over here is that since the IPv6 have 128 bit, and uh, if you are going to do the routing, the routing will be uh, quite complex if you are not going to summarize it. So IPv6 do allow the hierarchical the summarization. Now next, on the IPv6, they do support the IPsec end-to-end -end by design, all right? And uh, they also have built-in QoS. Now, even on IPv4, we do have the uh, type of service header, 
but in the IPv6, the QoS has been uh, redefined and they actually integrate into the IPv6. We are going to discuss more uh, when we touch on the header later on. And finally, IPv6 allow you to have the mobility that is also uh, built in. Now, as we are aware that IPv6 is 128-bit, so for us to write the address, it will be quite long. Now, let's compare IPv4 with IPv6. IPv4, the express will be like this. And each of these bytes each of these bytes be representing from 0 to 255. All right? So it's being uh, separated by dot, then 0 to 255. So we have four of this. All right, four of this group. Now in IPv6, we represent by a hexadecimal number. The hexadecimal number is from 0 to F. And all of these, we have four of these in one group. And we have eight of this group together. One, two, all the way until eight group. Okay. Now each of these hex number are being represented by four bit. Okay. So is actually all zero means a zero and all one basically means F. F in this case means fifteen. So we have zero to fifteen. And we have eight of these. Alright in four hexadecimal digits. So we have four hexadecimal digit and in eight group that will give us 128 bit long. Now this is an example on how the IPv6 look like and uh, do you agree that it's pretty long? Now since we can't expect to remember all these address in a long string, they come up with a compressed format now, as you can see from here, this quad zero can be represented by a single digit zero. Okay, so you can see that single digit zero. Now, let's look into this address, 09C0. Now, zero in front have no meaning, so we can also remove the zero in front. But zero at the back do have a meaning, so we cannot remove zero at the back, but those zero in front can be removed. Now, even though you can see that the after the compress, you can see that it's better, but it's still pretty long. Now, one way for us to even shorten it further is to use a double colon. Now, as you can see from here, this 00, zero can be represented by double colon. And please remember that we cannot use double colon more than once. So it will be wrong if, let's say, you are going to have double colon in one single address. So here, this is a valid. Alright, so this is the IPv6 address expression. Now let's look into the uh, IPv6 address structure. Okay, so IPv6 just like IPv4, they consist of two parts. One is the network prefix, another one is the interface identifier. If you still remember, this is my IPv4, then we have a subnet mask. Let's say this is 255.255.0.0. .255 .0 .0. So 255.255 indicate that this is the network network, and host and host. Okay, so this is uh, how we write our IPv4. Now, moving forward on IPv6, we still have the network prefix and identifier, just that we do not have any subnet mask. And for us to do that, we are going to use uh, the address. For example, this is my IPv6. So my IPv6, let's say I have a global address. Like this okay and I'm going to use a 64 so the entire IPv6 here have 128 bit all right so indicate that 64 here indicate that 64 of the first part is the network and 64 of the next next part here is the host okay so here this is my prefix length now there are three ways for you to configure IPv6 the first uh, definitely is a manual configuration so you have to configure your IPv6 manually then we can do automatic generated through the system software all right so we have the FE80 link local and we also can generate using the EUI64 format now let's look into the configuration how we can configure the IPv6 address 
Here I'm going to start with my uh, ENSP. Okay, so I'm going to have two routers and uh, one Ethernet link. So that will be on the Gigabit Ethernet link. So I'm going to start my routers now. Okay. Right. Now, when you first started on the ENSP, uh, the default will be IPv4 that is enabled. So for you to enable the IPv6, we have to uh, configure a command. All right, so let me start with this one first. All right, so we have here router one, okay. And I'm going to configure this as the router two. Right, so you have to use IPv6 to enable first. Then you go into gate zero zero, IPv6 enable. Now, once you have enable here, as you can see that currently there's no IP address. I'm going to configure this as a manual configuration. So for me to do manual configuration, let's say I'm going to use like this, 2001 colon 12 colon colon 1. Uh, remember that all the zero using uh, the zero is being truncated using double colon. So it's using a 64. As you can see from here, the bit from 1 bit to 128 bits. So I'm going to use 64. Display this. As you can see that now, the interface is up and this is my IP addressing using a manual way. Now, if you want to see more detail on the IP addressing, you can do a display this IPv6 interface. Enter. Now you can see that this is my address. Okay, with the subnet of slash 64. You notice that they also create automatic addressing for me. FE80, 2E0, FCFF, FE, EB68DA. Now, you can see that this automatic generator is my link local. Okay, and I'm going to do it on the router 2 as well. All right, IPv6, interface gate 000, IPv6 enable. IPv6 address 2001 12 colon colon 2 64 so that is our manual configuration pretty easy right so when I do a display this IPv6 interface as you can see that this is my IPv6 now I'm going to do a ping IPv6 2001 12 colon colon 1 that will be on router 1. As you can see that now, it's pingable. All right, so uh, this is the first manual configuration. And as you can see that they also have this uh, automatically generated. All right, that's our link local. But now we, are want, we want to look into, uh, more importantly is generated using the EUI format. So what exactly is the EUI format? Now, as you can see from here, this is my MAC address. The MAC address has 48 bits. All right, so the first 24 bit is my vendor ID. All right, and the second 24 bit is my vendor number. All right, which in this case, this is a some sort of serial number. So for different vendor, like for example, Huawei interface, they will have a, a same vendor ID. Okay, definitely there will be a few. All right, so uh, for example, Intel Broadcom, they also have their own vendor ID. Now what EUI uh, make this address or what we call generated through the IEEE EUI, EUI stands for Extended Unit Identifier, is that they are going to make a 48-bit to become 64-bit. Now how, how they can actually make the 48-bit to become 64-bit? Now what they do here is that they are going to split this into two halves. All right, two part, and they are going to insert a 16 bit in between. And you can see that from here, this one, the four bit, four bit, four bit, and four bit. So you can see that this is one, 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 zero, which is represent E. So they insert F, 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 E in between. So you have 24 plus 16 plus 
24, that will give you 40, 64 bits. All right, so this is the EUI 64. Now what you can see from here as well, as you can see that from the first 24 bit, the bit number seven, the bit number seven, you can see that they change from zero to one. Okay, G here representing this is a group or it can be a host. But this one, please be careful. This is how you can actually number the EUI 64. Let me give you one example. Let me go back into my lab. So here uh, is my lab. Okay, and uh, I'm going to remove my address, okay, on both the routers. Okay, so you can see that I only have IPv6 enabled, but I do not have any addressing here. Now for me to configure the IP address using EUI64, what I need to do is just to specify the network prefix. So this is how I do it. 2001 colon 12 colon colon 64. You'll notice that I did not put in the host ID. All right, so you can see that the address is any cast address. Now, if I do a question mark here, I'm going to look into the any cast later on. So by doing this, you are configuring any cast. Okay, so you can see that no IP address exists. So you need to have both unicast and any cast. And what you need to do, very simple, you just do a EUI64. And you can see that the interface is up. Right? And if I do a display this IPv6 interface, now you can see that it's 2001.12, then followed by this address. So where's this address come from? In fact, this address is come from my MAC address. Okay, now let, let's just double check is true or not. When I do a display this interface, so when I do a display this interface, basically I'm purely looking into the IPv4. Okay, and if you look into my MAC address, this is my MAC address. Okay, let me copy this and I put it into my notepad. So this is my MAC address for this interface. And uh, let me clear this. If I'm going to do a display this IPv6 interface, you can see that this is my IPv6 address. Now what you can see from here quite significantly is that uh, in between EB68DA, EB68 EB68DA, this is the first, uh, the last 24 bit, okay? And you notice that uh, what they do here is that they actually split it into half and they are going to add FFFE into it. Okay, so you can see from here, FFFE. And uh, we are going to split into IPv6 address. So here, I'm going to make it like IPv6. So here, we have the 68DA, FE, EB. And here, let me delete this colon. It's become FC, FF. Now, please remember over here is that if I just do a conversion over here, if you still remember the EUI 64, the bit number seven all right okay so it will convert from zero to one so let's let's look into here so you can see that this is e0 e0 is here but you notice that there is a two here where's this two come from now if let's say we are going to split this all right so zero is become four zero and the other one is four zero okay and you notice over here bit number seven four five Six, seven. So I'm going to turn this bit, turn this bit from zero into one. And what do you get? It's become zero, two. So now you have a two here and the zero in front in IPv6 is being uh, removed. 
all right, for us to do compress. So now you have the EUI 64. And the, uh, the uh, 2001 colon 12 is the network ID that I entered just now. So now you have it. All right, so this is the exactly the uh, address that I have on the EUI 64. Now, if I go back into R2, display this, IPv6 address 2001 colon 12, then I'm going to do a colon colon 64, EUI 64. Okay, display this. All right, so you can see that this EUI 64 display this IPv6 interface. So as you can see that this is my address. All right, so if I'm going to do a copy and I do a ping from router one and I ping to router two, you can see that it's pingable. All right, so here I show you how we can actually configure the manual configuration auto-generated through the FE80, which is a link local, and we also have EUI64. Thanks for watching. Please do not forget to subscribe to our channel.